Whenever an element combines with the second element, it forms something called a compound. Now in any pure compound, the relative amount of one atom to the second atom can be given or represented using a ratio of whole numbers. For example, let's look at a water molecule. The formula for water is H2O, and the ratio of our H molecules to our water molecules is 2 to 1. In other words, for every O molecule, there are two H molecules. Now, this above ratio is known as the empirical formula. Now, on the contrary, there's also something called <coughs> the molecular formula. And the molecular formula gives you the exact number of atoms found in each compound. Now, sometimes your empirical formula will be the same as your molecular formula, as is in the case of water. This is both an empirical formula and the molecular formula. Other times, these two guys will differ. For example, suppose we look at the hydrocarbon C8H16. The molecular formula gives you the exact amount of atoms. In other words, this is our molecular formula. In this hydrocarbon, there are eight C molecules, carbon molecules, and 16 H molecules. However, the empirical formula for this molecule is C1H2. In other words, for every two H molecules, there's one C molecule. And if we divide 16 by 8, we also get 2. The same way if we divide 2 by 1. So the way you basically go from a molecular to an empirical formula is you find a common number and you divide it by that common number, making sure that we get whole numbers. So in this case, 8 goes into 16 twice, and 8 goes into 8 once. Now, why is an empirical formula useful? Well, an empirical formula can be used to find the percent by mass of any atom in our compound. Now, let's look at this example again. How can we find the percent by mass of hydrogen in our molecule, in our compound? Well, what we do is we take our atomic weight of our H, which is one gram per mole, and divide that by our molecular weight of this guy, or the empirical weight of this guy. And what we get is 14 grams per mole. These guys, these units cancel, and we get 1 over, 15, 1 over 14, which is 0 0.0714. Now to get the percent, we multiply by 100, and we get 7.14% by mass of H in CH2. So in this compound, our H takes up 7.14% by mass. So now, suppose I want to find my empirical formula given percent by mass. So suppose I'm given that my compound is 11.11% hydrogen and 88.89% oxygen. I have to follow three steps to find the empirical formula. In my first step, I make the assumption that I have 100 grams of my compound. And what I do is I convert this guy to fraction and this guy to fraction by dividing each guy by 100. And then I multiply each guy by my 100 grams of compound to find how many grams of each is in my compound. So, 100 grams of my compound multiplied by 0 0.1111, which I got this guy divided by 100, equals 11.11 .11 grams of H in my 100 grams of compound. Now likewise, I multiply 100 grams times 0 0.8889, and this gives me 88.89 grams of oxygen in my 100 grams of compound. Now, I have to convert my grams to moles. In other words, I want to find how many moles of each guy, or of each atom, is in my compound. Now, 11.11 .11 grams of H divided by the molecular or atomic weight of H, one gram per mole, gives me 11.11 .11 moles of H. Likewise, I do the same thing for oxygen. 88.89 grams of oxygen divided by the atomic weight for oxygen, 16 grams per mole, grams cancel and I get 5.56 moles. So now I simply take this guy, the moles of my H, divide that by the moles of my oxygen, and I get 2, or approximately 2. And this, and this means that for every 2 moles of H, 
I have one mole of oxygen. And therefore, I could write my empirical formula in the following way. For every two moles of H, I have one mole of oxygen. And my empirical formula is water.